This is astronaut Scott Kelly orbiting Earth in the International Space Station. He's playing some kind of really cool space ping pong. He's got super hydrophobic paddles and a ball, which is just a ball of liquid water. How come water adopts such a nice spherical shape in microgravity? This is what we're going to discuss today in the Lutetium project. But what is a liquid? It's a group of agitated molecules in a disordered state. In a liquid, molecules attract each other. Therefore, they constantly interact with one another. They often change neighbors and repel each other when they meet. If we compare the environment of a molecule on the surface and the one of a molecule inside a liquid, the first one has two times fewer neighbors. Now, imagine we want to increase the surface of the liquid. We have to take one molecule from the bulk and bring it at the surface. It requires breaking half of the attractive interactions that the molecule had. A liquid prefers the configuration which has the maximum number of attractive interactions. This is why it's in a cohesive state. And having more attractive interactions means having fewer molecules at the surface. That's why every liquid tends to have a surface as small as possible. For a given number of molecules, the best way to minimize the surface area is to put them into a sphere. So why aren't all liquids around us shaped like spheres? On Earth, there is an additional force to take into account, gravity. Surface tension tends to give a round shape to liquids, whereas gravity flattens them. These two forces are in competition. On the large scale, gravity wins. But on smaller scales, surface tension wins, as you'll see in our microfluidics adventures. That's why big drops are flatter than smaller droplets that are perfectly spherical. If we want to see big round drops, we have to make sure they don't feel their weight anymore. One solution would be to erase gravity by orbiting around Earth. But it's not exactly a common thing to do. Another more practical solution is to put the drop in a liquid of identical density. We fill a tank with water mixed with increasingly more alcohol as we go up. As a result, the deeper we go in the tank, the denser the liquid. Then, we pour some oil, less dense than water, but denser than ethanol. As you know, oil does not mix with water. The oil will burn through the layers of water less dense than itself to stop before the layer of water with higher density. At this moment, the oil will form a perfect sphere. This experiment was first performed by Belgian physicist Joseph Plateau in the mid-19th century. But he didn't stop there. Plateau wanted to see what happened if he deformed the drop by pulling on it to create a cylinder. As soon as the surface of the cylinder becomes bigger than the surface of two spheres, the drop is split in two. This is what we call the Rayleigh plateau instability, and we can see this phenomenon every day with a tap. If the jet is thick enough, the instability doesn't have enough time to build up before the water reaches the sink, and the jet is shaped like a cylinder. On the other hand, if the flow rate is reduced and the jet gets thinner, the cylinder breaks up into droplets. Now why do we call this force surface tension? To answer that, we will use soap bubbles. A bubble is a thin layer of liquid water floating in the air. Just like a drop, it is shaped as a sphere. But the layer is so thin that we can consider the liquid to have two surfaces and no volume. Therefore, the effects of surface tension are easier to see. Here is a balloon that's about to burst, filmed with a high-speed camera. We can see the plastic shrinking and then converge towards the point opposite to the initial hole. When the balloon is inflated, it is under pressure. All the points on the surface want to get closer to one another. But near the hole, the forces are unbalanced. On one side it stretches, and on the other there is nothing to counter the tension. Now we will do the same experiment with a soap bubble. We can see it shrink like the balloon. It means that the liquid film is also subject to a tension. So now we know surface tension is just a tension force, as in the case of a spring, a rubber band, and a balloon. And it can even move stuff around. This is a metal frame and a rod that we put on the frame. Everything is placed in soapy water. When we take it out, two rectangular soap films are formed on both sides of the rod. We break the film on one side and the rod is pulled to the other side. For the explanation, it's just like before. When there is liquid everywhere, surface tension pulls simultaneously on both sides and the forces compensate each other. When one of the films disappears, the forces are unbalanced and the rod is attracted towards the remaining soap film. Therefore, surface tension is a force parallel to the surface of the liquid. We can also do the experiment with an inclined plane. 
surface tension will manage to raise the rod up the slope. So, we start to understand the concept of surface tension and its properties. Let's see what we can do with it. Okay, so why did the area containing particles suddenly retract when we added soap? That's because it's pulling stronger than the area with soap. And therefore, soap reduces surface tension. So, what's in there exactly? In soap, molecules have two different parts, one that likes water and one that doesn't. So in a solution, these molecules spontaneously go to the interfaces, where the hydrophilic part can stay in the water and the hydrophobic part can stick out in the air. Remember we said that in water, surface molecules were frustrated because they have less attractive interactions than the ones in the bulk. Here it's different. A soap molecule isn't frustrated because its hydrophobic part wouldn't have created attractive interactions with water anyway. So, from the liquid's point of view, it's easier to create a surface with soap than with water. Soap molecules are called surfactant because they act on surface tension. In fact, they reduce it. And the motion we observed with our particles between two areas of different surface tensions is called the Marangoni flow. This phenomenon was first studied by Italian physicist Carlo Marangoni in the mid-19th century, but it's still an active research topic as you'll see in the next videos of the Lutetium project. But just to pique your interest, let's show you another Marangoni flow. This is a piece of camphor. Just like soap, it's composed of surfactant molecules, but unlike soap, these molecules are also very volatile. That's why we can make camphor boats. We stick a small piece of camphor on a plastic boat, we put it in the water, and it is propelled by a Marangoni flow. But, since camphor vaporizes in its wake, the surface of the water becomes pure again after the boat passes. Therefore, a difference in surface tension between the front and the rear of the boat is always maintained. That's why it can be propelled as long as there is still camphor to be dissolved. That's it! We hope you enjoyed this first video in our studio. If you don't want to miss the next ones, feel free to subscribe. And if there is something you want to share with us about the video or its content, just leave us a comment.